All right, hello and welcome to uh, the lecture for pre-calculus on section 1.3 on algebraic expressions. For this lecture, we're going to be uh, talking all about things called polynomials, the multiplication of polynomials, the factoring of these things. Uh, and we'll also be looking at several uh, special factors, uh, factoring methods, okay, a couple uh, very, very common things in this class and in other classes. Um, and even in higher, higher classes as well. Um, things that, uh, you know, you might come up with, um, you know, uh, maybe even just on your own, you, you try to memorize some of these special things so that you, you, <laughs> you don't have to do them, you know, you don't have to work on that every time. Uh, we're going to start with just some basic definitions, uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page, and then we're going to take this to the level of uh, a few examples, and then, like, you know, like I said, some, some special ones. So, first, I want to just you know, talk about something called a variable. So a variable. Uh, a variable is a, a letter or a symbol a symbol which takes the place of an unknown number. Okay, so uh, maybe it's something that you you want to change at another time, or maybe it's something you just don't know, and so you use a symbol uh, to take the place of the number, right? So let's say, you know, I, I'm going to go to the store and buy apples, and I want to buy two apples, and but I don't know how much an apple costs. So I write this down. I say um, uh, two times, oh boy, two times A, the cost of the apple. That's what I'm going to spend. And what I've just done is I've substituted there a symbol that is not a number um, for a number, right? Now that, that price of the apple can change over time, right? It can go up tomorrow. It can come down in a week, depending on the season or whatever, what have you. But this form, two times the cost of the apple, will always tell you the cost of the apples that I bought, the two of them, no matter what that cost of the apple is. So this is always the cost of two apples. Okay? So this is really nice. This is really, really nice. Um, no matter what that cost changes to, two times A is always going to be the cost of the two apples. This is a really nice really nice thing to have. So variables are used all over, like all over. <laughs> okay, um, the next thing we're going to talk about is how you can uh, uh, name these different things like what I just wrote, 2a. How do you name these things? Um, when you've got just one variable multiplied by a number, so let's say we've got uh, uh, something like this, We've got um, a variable x times a number like 3. This is an example of a monomial. Mono meaning one. Okay, so this is a monomial, just one thing, just one term. I could change this by increasing the power like that. Okay, but I, there's, there's just a product here. There's no sums or differences in here. This is a monomial. Okay, I could take this and add to it another variable. Uh, maybe instead of x squared, we'll just add in like a 1.5x. Okay, now we've got a sum in here, and it's it's taking apart, it's it's separating rather these two things, these two terms that we have. This is what we call a binomial. And a trinomial, as you can guess, is just a, another one. So we've got you know, 3x squared plus 1.5x plus or minus, let's do a minus this time, minus 9. Here we've got a trinomial. Each of these things, each of these we call a term. So we've got three terms. And we see that they are, in fact, unique each, right? There's no variable on the 9. The variable here on this 1.5 is 1 to the first power. 
and the variable uh, here on the three has a square on it. So these are all unique. We can't combine them because the variables have different powers. Okay. Um, what I was just pointing out here is that the degrees are different. Here we've actually got an x to the 0. If this is a 0 degree term, here we've got a first degree term, and here this is a second degree term. When the degrees on terms are different, you can't combine them together, right? So that's different than if we did have the same degrees. 3x squared minus 2x squared. Right, x squared is just a number, and it's going to be the same number as this, x squared. And so if we've got 3 times a number and we take away 2 times that number, we've only got one of those numbers left. So we can combine terms that are similar with the same degree. We can't combine them easily um, if they don't have the same degree. Okay. Now what I've been showing you are examples of things called polynomials. A polynomial polynomial a polynomial is any of those a monomial a binomial a trinomial anything right if we take any number of terms with variables raised to some power where it's a whole number power we get a polynomial okay so a polynomial is the sum of terms a sum of terms, perhaps, is a better way to write this. A sum of terms, which have a constant, that's a number, times a variable, it's like x or y, or a in our first example, times a variable to a whole power, a whole degree. So for example, this is a polynomial. It's a trinomial, to be more specific, but it is a polynomial. We've got a 1, a 1 times x squared, a 1 times x, and a 1 times x to the 0th. I guess we'll make an exception there for whole numbers. <laughs> um, uh, but we've got this, right? And this satisfies everything that I've written there. Here's an example that doesn't. We'll take a variable and we'll take the third root of it. We'll add that to x to the second and we'll subtract x and we'll add 5. This looks like a polynomial with four terms, but we don't have a whole power here. We've got a fractional power there. So when you've got a sum of terms and, and one of them or multiples of them don't have whole powers, it's not a polynomial. So in this section we're only talking about polynomials. Okay? Um, Alright. Let's talk about the next thing. How do you add and subtract polynomials? Uh, well, I've already kind of looked at this a little bit. It involves identifying which terms are similar by the degrees on the variable and then combining the coefficients. So I'll write down just sort of a big example here. We've got x cubed minus x squared plus 5x minus 9. So that's one polynomial. And then we'll add to it another polynomial, x cubed minus x squared plus 5x minus 1. So this is a polynomial by itself. It's got all whole degrees and it's it's satisfying all the requirements before. Similarly this is a polynomial. Each of them together has four terms. When I write this big sum it looks like we've got a polynomial with eight terms. But some of these are similar. 
right? This one is x cubed, and so is this one. We can combine them together, right? If we've got one x cubed and we add another x cubed, that is all together two x cubes. I see another pair of similar terms here, minus x squared and a minus x squared here. If we add those together, we get minus x squared minus x squared. So we've got two x squareds that have been taken away. So we'll just throw those together. Okay. And I see here again, I did this on purpose. We've got two five x's, two x's, right? We've got five x's and then another five x's, which we have added together. And so this is all together 10 x's. And then we've got the constants here at the bottom, at the on the far end. We've got a minus 9, minus a 1, and we all know that negative 9 minus 1 is negative 10. So the final result of adding all these terms together, adding only like terms together, uh, is 2x cubed minus 2x squared plus 10x minus 10. This is a four-term polynomial of degree. Three, right? We've got th a third degree term there. That's the highest one. And I've written it on the left. That is the degree of the whole polynomial. Okay? And this is the standard way of writing polynomials, is writing the term with the largest degree on the left and going down to the right. So the standard way is largest degree on the left. decreasing to the right. Okay. So this is the standard form of that. All right, I noticed that we couldn't see that there, so there we go. Sorry about that. Okay, now that you've had a second to look at it, I'll go ahead and scroll down. Need to be more aware of this zone, <laughs> the no right zone. Okay, the next thing is is how to multiply polynomials together, and then we're going to get into some of these special uh, special patterns. So multiplying polynomials, and uh, really this multiplication polynomials it's just sort of an obnoxious just an obnoxious application of the distributive property of numbers um, if you were to fully write out all the details every time without recognizing the patterns it would be obnoxious so here we go I'm gonna do this just in general so we're gonna let a B C and D be any real numbers Okay, so any real numbers. I don't care what they are. They could be negative, positive, who cares? But the point is you don't know what they are. So these four letters are variables to you. So the question is, what is A plus B, right? A plus B, that's a polynomial there, times C plus D another polynomial. Okay. So I hope we remember the distributive property, which says if you have a number e times a sum or a difference, you can distribute that across the sum, which is what we're going to do here. a plus b, this is just a number. It's a sum of two numbers, but it is a number. So we're going to distribute this whole sum across the other one. So this is a plus b times c plus a plus b times d. Right? A plus B is just a number, so we distribute it. We multiply it by C, and then we multiply it by D. Okay? And now we're going to apply the distributive property one more time. Well, two more times. With the C, 
and the D. So this is A times C plus B times C and A times D plus B times D. Okay. So in general, this is how you multiply any polynomial times any other polynomial. You take the first polynomial on the left or on the right, whichever way you like to do your distribution, and then you multiply it by every single term in the other polynomial. And then you distribute every term through the first polynomial. So we'll do a few examples here. 2x plus 1, 3x minus 5. We're going to find out what this product is through distribution. So this is 2x plus 1. We take the left-hand one, and we multiply it by every term in the other one. And then we distribute every term <laughs> through the first one. 2x times 3x plus 3x times 1. I'll try and keep the directions here the same. Minus 2x times 5 minus 2x uh, 1 times 5. We need to be careful with things like negative signs. right? This is actually a negative 5. So when you multiply it by the 2x and by the 1, you need to make sure you've still got that negative in there. Okay. Uh, and then we can just combine things together through products, right? 2 times 3 is 6. x times x is x squared. So there's an x squared term. 1 times 3x is just 3x. 5 times 2x is 10x. And 1 times 5 is just 5. We can combine the 3x and the 10x now. 6x squared minus 7x's minus 5. We had 3x's, we took away 10 of them, so we're short 7x's. Okay, now this is the final product. It turns out that 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 5 is just 6x squared minus 7x minus 5. Okay, now this is. This is, again, the general way of doing things. It doesn't matter how many terms are in these things. 2x plus 3 times, I, I, I don't know, x squared minus 5x plus 4. How do you do this one? The same way. You take 2x plus 3. You multiply it by every single term in the other one. No matter how many there are. Here we had three, so I just distributed it to all three. And then you go back through and you just say this is 2x times x squared plus 3 times x squared minus 2x times 5x minus 3 times 5x plus 2x times 4 plus 3 times 4. And as you can see, this gets pretty obnoxious the more terms there are, right? We're only working with a binomial times a trinomial here. And in the end, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six things to simplify and then possibly combine together. So when you work with polynomials that are much larger, this just gets obnoxious. But this is the pattern, the distributive property used over and over again. This is the pattern that you, you just need to learn how to use, right? Um, so if you've learned this, then you can multiply any polynomials together without any issues. But there are some nice special ones that are really handy to have memorized. So this first one is called the sum and difference of the same term. So we're going to take uh, any number x plus any number y. So that's the sum of two numbers. Then we're going to take and multiply that by the difference of those two numbers. No matter what these numbers are, if you've got a sum of them times a difference of them, you always get the difference of the squares. Okay, This is really handy. The next one deals with, oh, what if you've just got the sum of them 
multiplied together. This happens all the time too. Well, this gives you always the first one squared, the second one squared, and then two times the product of them added in. It's always act the first two, the first number multiplied squared plus the product of the two times two plus the last number squared. Always, no matter what. Uh, what about the differences? x minus y times x minus y. Uh, this one's very similar. You always get the first one squared. You still get the second one squared. But the difference here comes in the middle term. Okay. Another really handy one, or a couple handy ones to memorize, are perfect cubes x plus y cubed. So I'm not writing that out, but this is just x plus y times x plus y times x plus y. Right? We've got three of them. We multiply them all together. That's the same as x plus y cubed. Okay. Now this, it's a little bit longer, but it is the first one cubed plus three times the first one squared times the second one. It's a nice pattern that's going to develop here. Plus 3 times the first one times the second one squared. So the first number x, it's, it's cubed and then squared and then it's the first. I hope you can guess it's going to be the zeroth power here. And we see the y, it's zeroth power and then the first power and then the second power. And this one's going to be the third power. OK. And the numbers, 1, 3, 3, 1, 13, 31. Okay. For differences, there's another similar pattern. Just like we had for perfect squares, there's, there's a similar thing here. And it's just, it's just the same numbers and things like this. But the difference, the, ne the negative sign in there, affects the sum. Right? So it turns out that this one is going to be negative. This one's going to be positive, and this one's going to be negative. So I'll let you work out the distribution for these ones. Um, but this is uh, this is the final results, right? We've got five final results here um, that are really handy to have memorized, and because lots of times you're asked in problems to factor a polynomial, which means to take something like uh, x squared plus 2x plus 1 and write it as a product of two binomials, right? Factor it. And having, having, one of those, having one of those special patterns memorized helps you see things like this, right? Helps you work backwards to, to figure out the factors. Okay? Um, and so that's it. There are lots of example problems that you can watch or that you can find, um, but that's the material for section 1.3. I hope that helps, and I will talk to you next time in section for section 1.4.